Let's go straight now to London. Our correspondent, Benedict Pavio, is there. I believe she uh, is near Buckingham Palace. Benedict, tell us where you are and what's the atmosphere like. Well, as you would expect, I'm outside Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace, where the Union Jack, the British flag, is at half-mast. And this is on the day that Prince Philip, at the age of 99, after uh, many health problems, has died, passed away peacefully uh, this morning. A queen who is in mourning, a nation that is in mourning with uh, half-mast flags not just on royal palaces, so this one, Buckingham Palace, in a sense the uh, headquarters of the British royal family, where normally at this time of the year the Queen would be in residence. But because of the pandemic, she and Prince Philip were shielding. Uh, we are here in London, the British capital, and in England, coming out slowly of our third COVID-19 confinement in the midst of this uh, pandemic that has taken such a human cost. And it is obviously a nation that is sad. As far as the logistics are concerned, uh, this, of course, there was a plan for his passing. He's entitled as the husband of the monarch, Queen Elizabeth, to have a state funeral. I think that is unlikely now to happen. He wanted a military-style, private, not fussy funeral. He wanted it, we're told, to happen in St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. So I think that's what we will find out in the coming days. Um, and then possibly I would expect some sort of very big national, international memorial, possibly at Westminster Abbey, where that would allow time and when the laws here allow and the pandemic allows to have a, a nation remembering this man who the Queen described as her strength and her stay. Benedict, um, we've been hearing a short while ago from the British government saying they are asking people today not to gather um, outside uh, the royal palaces. It looks from where you are relatively quiet, so people are for the moment um, observing that request. Well, it's totally uh, in keeping with us slowly coming out of the confinement, as I said, the third one in uh, 13 months here in England. Uh, the initial one was indeed national. This is uh, There are different rhythms across the UK. But totally uh, wise and uh, expected for the government to ask people not to gather. At the moment, what is allowed in England by law is for people to meet up to six people outdoors. Uh, I can tell you there are many more than six people. The world's press has descended. There is not just British interest. There is international widespread interest at this man who for so many years decades even, uh, was the strength and stay of Queen Elizabeth, who contributed uh, to her in a very major way, not just the education which he was charged with of his children um, and of providing, helping uh, to have four children and many grandchildren and uh, great-grandchildren, uh, but of course uh, that Commonwealth role and somebody who has gained the affection of this nation and nations across the world. And he is the one who opened the British royal family initially back in 1969, way before the internet, way before social media. He advised, encouraged a rather shy Princess Elizabeth and then Queen Elizabeth to let the cameras in, not just for her, her coronation, but also to see and in a sense help modernise uh, very much the British royal family. And here we are in the 21st century. It had been hoped uh, that he would reach his 100th birthday on the 10th of June. That was not to be. He died this morning peacefully and we wait to hear what the official uh, period of mourning will be and when the funeral will take place. And just a few people starting to gather here and I can tell you behind the cameras the public is coming here. Uh, some of them wearing masks, some of them not. All right, Benedict, we will see what happens. Thank you very much indeed for your update from uh, just outside Buckingham Palace.